Ads are one of the sources of revenues to many creators and website owners, but many are turned off by ads and blocks them in their system with ad blockers. In this video, we discuss the differences between software and hardware ad blockers, how they work, and the pros of and cons of each. Uh, this is coming up next. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from IGM3, where we discuss software engineering by example. In this video, we will discuss what are the differences between the software and the hardware ad blockers, right? So let's get to it. So the first thing we want to discuss is the software ad blocker, how it really works, and uh, and how it actually communicates with the servers and what exactly happening behind the scenes and to understand what's going on right so we're gonna talk, take an example here where uh, you have a mobile phone or you have a computer and you're going to check some cake recipes so you go to a, some famous site called cakerecipes.com so and you start you you type in this URL hit enter or tap and then you start seeing the site and on the site you can start seeing some ads so what is exactly happening on the back end right so let's just like dissect the process all right first thing we do is we make a request to cakerecipes.com so that's the dns entry uh, that's the name of the server but in order to do that we need to find the ip address of which that site is hosted on right to uh, the IP address of the server all right so we talk to something called the DNS the do domain name server uh, usually this is your local domain name server if you're using for Verizon or Frontier right you talk to that uh, you can use Google DNS servers or for a cloud a cloud uh, flare 1111 and it will it is like a lookup it says hey oh, okay recipes oh that's the IP right so that's what we're gonna we're doing here right so we're gonna make a request and then we immediately get the IP and now I can actually connect to the server. Now I can do all this uh, routing and go through the tables and uh, go through the switches through the wild wild internet, right? And then I have the IP address here, 10.33.12.124. This happens to be the Cake Recipes web server. So I, I'm going to make a get request. It says, hey, give me your index.html. That's the default page. And that will download the HTML page, which has a bunch of scripts, which has a bunch of tags, JavaScript stuff, right? Including those ad scripts. So now it's downloaded to my device. After which, uh, the my device or the browser here in my device will say, hey, hey, I have a bunch of scripts that I need to execute. And one of them or a few of them are uh, actually pointing to this thing. Google Ad Services, so which which is basically one of the ad agencies, um, ad service that serves those ads, right? So it will communicate. So again, this is a name. So you have to ask your DNS server, say, hey, what is the IP address of that thing? So you're gonna ask the DNS server again, and then that will reply with the IP address of the ad server. It's just like consuming another content, but you don't have any control over this, unfortunately, right? So you can see the chattiness between those servers and different jumping between different domains. And you, you get the IP address 10, 22, 1, 11, 23. That's the ad server, right? The, one of the ad servers that Google has. And then you can communicate to that, and that will pull down your... Uh, your ad and then that's that's the moment where you start seeing the ad all right on your page so you can see just by having ads ad slows down your page loading because of all this ping ponging that going on right it's just like going uh, the chattiness the the latencies and all these requests that you don't really ask for but you have to <laughs> in order to load the page so that's what's happening here so a software ad blocker. So what what does a software ad blocker here mean first? So ad blocker blocks ad. That's what the definition, right? So it's a, a question. Software and hardware is just a question of when. When are you blocking this thing, right? So a software ad blocker blocks the ad 
after it was loaded from the ad server. So it went through all these hops and then went through the ad and went through the DNS entry and went back and then requested the ad and came back to your device. And then you can see that this little disk uh, telling me that, hey, I have an ad blocker software on my phone application or a Chrome extension could be or Firefox extension or like on desktop could be another thing like a browser extension usually they are mostly browser extension right so they they will get loaded and then the chrome extension just eh, looks like you you guys have some ads let me let me strip them out so we'll do and then it's just like okay i'm gonna oh there's an ad remove it there's an ad remove it there's an ad remove it so that's how software most i'm gonna say or correct that most software ad blockers work right you load everything and then they clean up your browser experience to just not see the ads right so but but you have loaded those ads essentially so you loaded those ads but you removed them so it got counted right it those those ads got counted those those bandwidth, the internet bandwidth got counted right now. You, you got hit by those ad uh, bandwidth, you got hit by, by the latency, everything, but you got a nice experience without ad at the end, right? And yeah, that's how a software ad blocker works. So what are the pros and cons of this software ad blocker, right? So first of all, it's easy to install, right? Just Download the Chrome extension and install, and that's it. You're done, right? That's that's one of the good pros, I think, of this. Cons. What are the bad things about this? I mean, not bad, but just like disadvantages of this. Well, if you have like a tablet, an iPad, a computer, and a, and a, and a phone, and then uh, your 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 spouse have also a phone, your kid have a phone, you can have a tablet. You have to install if you want to block ads. You have to install this ad blocker on all machines, right? Because they are software. They live in the client side, so you have to do them on the client so in order to block these unwanted ads, essentially, right? So that's but but the disadvantage also is like well. It still slows down your system. You don't really get any beneficial from performance points of view. You just like you don't see those ads at all, right? Some software uh, blockers are smart enough to detect those requests before they even go, and then just block them right there, right? But again, you just you downloaded that thing. You made sometimes or you may request. Sometimes it's hard to catch those requests to begin with. All right, let's jump to hardware load ad blocker. So same thing, ad hardware ad blockers like the likes of uh, Pi-hole, for example. Most of them, again, I'm talking about the varieties. Is they act like a DNS server. So. What you need to make most of the time here you have to actually first reserve a hardware device to be your DNS server or is it a Raspberry Pi or your PC any any other machine right and then you have to modify your router the the main machine that you connect to the the the, uh, the thing that you connect to the Wi-Fi device right and then you have to say hey by the way my DNS uh, is not Frontier, it's not Google, it's actually this thing right there in my local network. I don't know, the IP is 192.168.11.124, something like that, right? So that way, the router before, so that's the primary DNS, will say, hey, before you hit that thing, just go ahead and just like hit, hit, um, hit that DNS server instead. So everything goes through this... Uh, black hole essentially that just monitors like a bouncer you know just like bounces anything that's bad right so cake recipes you good cake recipes so this is like the cake recipes or the dns server the custom ad hardware ad blocker dns server will say hey cake recipes are cool and that's a cool site okay go ahead and we'll just we'll just do this search we'll just search its database for if it's a white listed or not and if it's not if it if it is well, listen if it's okay, then it will forward it to the upstream DNS server because there must be two DNS servers here. So the front end DNS server, which is your hardware ad blocker, and the secondary, which is 
the upstream DNS server, which could be Google, could be Cloudflare. And then just like forwards that to that, to that DNS server gets back the IP and then you would just continue that request normally, right? So we got the IP address, nice, right? And then we make the request, kcrecipes.com. Uh, we got, uh, I mean, we got the index HTML, which has the script, which has everything. And then what we do is like that request, that index HTML will have those ads as we explained, right? This, uh, the scripts. And then, well, well, both of them have Google ad services.com. So the first thing your browser does is like, Hey, DNS, what is that? What is the IP address of that thing? And the DNS, eh, no, you can't go in. Sorry. It will just immediately return blank thing. It's just like block. It will just die immediately. So your browser will just give up and 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 won't continue trying to load that thing, right? So just like that, you blocked the ad immediately. All right. So that's the differences between software and hardware. So what are the pros of this? Pros of this: very quick page loading. You don't have to wait. For uh, for all these ads to load because they won't be they will be just be go to this black hole and they will just like disappear, right? Because that usually what what happens here will, most DNS will that blocker will return that one two seven zero zero one it will return loop back so it loop back on itself and does nothing. But yeah, so that the pros is very fast loading stuff, right? Right. Another advantage. Well, you don't have to install it. You know, you don't have to install any software on your client. Just by connecting to the Wi-Fi, you're ad blocked. That's the benefit of this. Your tablet connected to the Wi-Fi because you essentially you have all communicating with a single DNS entry, right? And that DNS entry is your hardware ad blocker. So everybody will just get this ad blocking feature for free. Well, cons. Guess what? This is actually dangerous stuff. If if your little Raspberry Pi or or machine, if you just turned off your hardware ad blocker, you will j lose internet altogether. You won't be able to access the internet unless you have specified a secondary. DNS server on your router, which takes time to kick in, by the way, right? Because uh, if if that if their Pi is down or, or your your PC, you just decided to shut down your PC, which acted like the hardware ad blocker, you won't have internet until you go manually and hack, not hack, but fix that <laughs> router to to basically give that uh, the updated DNS entry, which is one 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 or eight 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 eight, which points to Google or or Cloudflare. But that that's it basically guys the so it is another cons here really is, is it's it's not trivial to install a hardware ad blocker you mean know? I mean Pi-hole make it really easy to do right you have to as well you just few commands and then you are on but you still have to go to the router you need to know for for people who are just for the average Joe average Joe don't go to the router and configure the router to point to the DNS and configure that and change the IP address and figure out what IP address is there uh hardware ad blocker and all that stuff all right guys uh, that's all for me today hope you enjoyed this video uh, uh like this video if you like it uh, subscribe for more software engineering cool stuff coming up and uh, uh see you in the next one goodbye